All right, welcome to another film breakdown. This is obviously the scouting report for Houston. Houston's coming off a 195 overtime win against Texas A&M, a great win, and honestly against two teams that are very good, very physical defensively. And so why did it work or what worked for Texas A&M? We're going to deep dive into it. And before we get into it, though, just give you a little synopsis of Houston as a team with a couple individuals as before we break this down. All guards are three and D. All guards like LJ Cryer, 286 three point attempts, 286, and he's 39% from three. Uh, Sheed, 139 three point attempts. He's only a 31% three point shooter, though, so you live with those. But then Emmanuel Sharp had a great game in this game, as you'll see. He's shooting 37% from three on 221 attempts. So, in perspective, Jared McCain has almost 30 less three-point attempts than Sharp, and Sharp is their second leading three-point shooter behind Cryer. Nine players for Houston average a steal per game or better. Nine players. So that's all big men and then bench players. It's insane. They're crazy active on the glass, especially offensively. Duke is a really good offensive rebounding team. Duke has 337 offense rebounds per game or per game on the season. Houston has 464. 464, and they are just so active and led by Cryer, Sheed, and Sharp. So we're going to get right into it. So here, Houston loves to blitz ball screens, but he doesn't blitz here. It looks like he's blitzing. Like on the screenshot, it looks like he's blitzing, but it's a hard hedge. You always have to slip against Houston. The key is slipping. Big man needs to slip and stay about right there. Take one more step back and to the right. Like take one more step to the right now. If that's Phil Pawski, catch and face, then go. Keep your shooters in the corner. So it'd be like a roach right here. And I guess it doesn't matter, but ideally you have Roach as the ball handler. Mark Mitchell, maybe 23, Proctor in one corner, McCann in the other. Luckily, the, the guard here is patient because the big goes back. And this type of Proctor uh, mid-range shot that he hit a couple of times against JMU. Roach can hit those too. That's a good shot there by AM to get it going. Catch and shoot by Sharp. Just he's gonna pull, dude. He is going to pull and he's gonna pull from anywhere. That is a tough look to start the game, but he gets it off. And like I said, he averages uh, he averages six three point attempts a game. Thing almost had a stroke trying to read that. Again, you cannot lose him. Deep opposite is gonna be a shooter. Sharp, two for two. Cannot leave him. It's a great last name if you're a shooter, sharpshooter. Got to be careful attacking against Houston. This works out. It, it is the recipe for success against Houston, as you'll see throughout this game, but you can't get this deep. Can't get this deep. Help side's coming. It's got to be a dump off. Gets lucky, stays with it, finishes. But look, one-on-one is low key the key of the game is how can you score one on one i know it doesn't sound great but you'll see this is an ill advised shot houston will live with those and houston's off and running that's what she does best man attacks he doesn't finish but he has his guard to pick him up that's what houston loves to do if you're going to make a mistake they're immediately going to punish you but they're susceptible to straight line drives one on one they're a really good team defense, but sometimes they give those up. And they give up a lot of those against Texas A&M. This is a tough finish. Nice spin move there by the big fellas, Jawan Roberts. He does not shoot threes, by the way. He's just strictly what you saw. Sheed, left-handed, cannot let that happen. He's looking to drive. He is looking to drive and create. He's averaging 13 points per game, but six assists per game. So when he's driving, he's also looking to dish. He's the only player for Houston that averages more than two assists per game. There's like two other guys that are tied with 1.9 assists. Sheed gets that offense going with driving downhill, finishing, or looking for a, the next guy. Here, you can't close out like that. You know from my film breakdowns, with I think it was Duke against State, when they lost against State, the closeouts – like, it's 31% three-point shooter, four 
seconds left on the shot clock. Just close, hot hand, don't leave your feet. You leaving your feet creates one more for an open guy top of the key as time expires. Luckily for AM, he misses this, but how many times we've we seen a March Madness? This is the dagger. This is a dagger. But he misses. Now AM's off and running. This is what you got to do. You've got to attack Houston when they're not set defensively. AM does that, finds an th open three, catch and shoot. How many times have we seen Duke do that? So that's good. Like you got to go out and run. Don't really understand this coverage here by AM. Like he's basically telling him, hey, I'm not going to give you this ball screen as the ball screen's coming. And Sheed's like, thank you very much. I'll just go straight to the cup. Don't understand that coverage, but it's not Duke, so I'm not really worried. But Sheed in transition, just God almighty. That's what I'm talking about. That guy is filthy. You can, he is going to just shimmy, cross, got him, vision, assist. Got to bump him early in transition. Got to bump him off his line early. If you let him come to you, just like any other transition offense, it's going to be a bucket. Straight line drive, good dump down, good finish. Catch and rip. That's the key against Houston is catching and going. Jump, catch and have a purpose. Catch and have a purpose. One more. It's good offense. That's Malik Wilson right there. He's coming off the bench for them. He's 6'2", 175. He's a fine three-point shooter. It's nothing great. But the key with Malik Wilson, which I don't know if we'll see in this, the last six games he's played over 20 minutes per game, including 25 in this game. He has a knack for the glass. He has 15 games this season, 6'2", 175, 15 games where he's had five or more rebounds. Five or more rebounds averaging 15 minutes per game. He had 10 rebounds against Iowa State in their loss. He had six rebounds in this game. He had 9.6 rebounds. He's low-key a guy you got to look out for. You live with that with Sheed. You let him be a shot chucker. You let him be a shot chucker. This is where they kill you. Like I said, 464. Yeah, 464 offense rebounds. Just make that. Add that to the tally. Second chance points. That's LJ Cryer, 15 points per game. Good patience by AM back door. That's where you'll get aggressive teams on the back door. Good dump down, good handoff. Sheet again. Patient. They do a really good job of spreading the love. And Sharp makes them pay. A lot of hockey assists, too, to go with Sheed. Just good pass, good good one more. They know where the shooters are at all times. Sharp, catch and shoot. Can't let this happen, but number 13 does a fantastic job of just sending that shit back. But you do not want to be on the back of Sheed in transition because normally that's a layup. But holy shit, is this a great block. I mean, that's demoralizing. And then Tex A&M, go straight downhill. Sheed's a really good defender. I think he averages two steals per game. Yeah, 2.2 .2 steals per game. But no defender can really guard when you're backpedaling like this. Just a quick rip through. Good flush or good finish. Good steal. You got to beat him in transition. It's a tough take. Again, Sheed's a really good defender. That's a really good wall defensively. That's just a tough finish. But you got to hit these tough ones. I mean, that's textbook wall defense. One-on-one. -on -one. Now, this isn't the one-on-one -on -one you want to do because it's too stagnant. You want to pass and then go one-on-one, -on -one, not just dribble out the shot clock because now you're spinning into traffic and Houston's – bigs are taught to have their hands up i know that sounds like everybody does that but they their hands up in the passing lane like that is if you'll see their bench like during any game their assistant coaches every time will have their hands up emphasizing to the bigs have your hands up in the passing lanes he already has his hands up before the point guard even turns his head and they're out and going there goes sheed with his vision 
you catch you off balance, and then you find the shooter in transition, and Sharp makes them pay. Sharp makes them pay. Live ball turnovers will kill you against Houston. Will kill you against Houston. Transition defense is key, and obviously transition offense as well. Tough one. Good offensive rebound. And then, look, you got to catch and go. you got to get them when they're on their heels defensively. Sharp gets caught on his heels. Good attack, three-point play. Catch and have a purpose. Catch and have a purpose. And one. There's Malik Wilson again. Nice little pull up, but he won't kill you offensively. And then going right back at him. Like, Texas A&M did a really good job. They, Houston just scored, and Texas A&M goes right back at him. Don't leave your feet because now you're off balance, and Houston's going to do that. Sheet is going to do that. Once Houston has you off balance because of lack of discipline defensively, Houston will make you pay by attacking the gaps hard. You leave your feet, one more, just too easy. Too easy. You cannot do that. You have to play sound defense against Houston. As good as they are defensively, they're really good offensively. Got to get back. Missed the free throw. Got to get back. Houston's looking to run. So a secondary, just one-on-one. -on -one. She just says, thank you very much, and one. Filthy. You got to get into his body early. You cannot let him have that much space going downhill. You got to get in his body early. And I know this game, the officials were really dictating the flow of this game with a lot of foul calls, but you got to get in it. Because here comes a little ball screen, too. He gets bumped. The defender does. If you're guarding this big right here, setting a really low ball screen, you also got to be the hedger. But he stays attached and three-point play. You got to at least bump him off his line as the help side if your guy's setting a ball screen. They're good, man. They're, they're really good. It's a tough loader by former Duke great Henry Coleman. And Texas A&M did a really good job of beating them one-on-one -on -one to where they forced Houston to run zone. The best defense in the country is running zone. Running zone defense because they're getting carved up. So what do they do? Flash towards the middle, just like that. Make the big play. He hits a tough one, but look, the dump down is there, like right away. But Henry Coleman catches and rips, and then he hits a tough one. Hits a tough one. But if you have Houston playing zone, you're doing something really good offensively. And what it is offensively is executing one-on-one -on -one downhill drives. She just toying one-on-one. -on -one. Toying. Cross, cross, defenders so far back too, and then just honestly not great defense at all. You're giving them that much room, and then you're being – that manipulative on crossovers, and then you go for a ball fake, just not great defense. Ball screen, but this is a good set by Buzz Williams here. This is zone again, and this is a really good play. And I wonder if Duke will do something like this against this zone. You're screening the top guy of the zone. Screen the top guy of the zone. The middle guy here for Tex A&M is going to seal the middle defender in the zone, creates just a straight line drive. Punch it. Punch it. Try and go back. So we'll do it live. Just pass, simple ball screen. Now you have numbers. Seal them, punch it. It looks easy, but that's a good set. It's a great seal by Tex A&M. Texas A&M trying to trap ball screens. She will make you pay. He is composed. He's poised. That's a tough shot. I say one-on-one. -on -one. That's not what I mean when I say settle for attacking one-on-one. -on -one. That is a very difficult shot, low percentage, but 
AM keeps it alive with all of its rebound and scores. Scores. Cryer, just a smooth jumper. Smooth. How did he get so open? You got to either shoot that gap or attach. Defender for AM, they just did not play great defense at all this game. Like, I don't, you're going right into the screen. You had so much room to decide what you wanted to do against this ball, against this off ball screen, this down screen right here. Either attach and go over or shoot the gap. And he just runs right into the screener, gets shot. And it's an easy jumper. Duke just can't do that. Duke hasn't done that against ball screens so far the first two games, off ball screens. They've done a really good job attaching, going over, or shooting the gap, and going under. Just a simple dribble handoff. Prior again, 39% from three will make you pay. But then that's the key, attacking them in transition. Sheet is very good defensively, but nobody can stop going downhill. Again, ball screen, like that is so that's such bad defense by AM. It's such bad defense. It's a simple ball screen against Henry Coleman right here, and they're in drop coverage. But Coleman, like, I don't, he's not familiar with guarding big or guarding guards, I assume. I haven't watched much much AM, but when you have a post player trying to guard a guard on the outside, he's not going to be very crisp against a ball screen. But get that top foot, screeners here, top foot, go, already have it going over. Already have it going over because if Cryer right here rejects it, drop coverage is there to at least stunt until you get back. But again, a &M's getting crushed on ball screens here, and Coleman's shot, and Cryer gets all the space he needs. It's practically a 40% three-point shooter just getting open looks. That was my dog, if you heard that. Catch and shoot. We've seen Duke do that. We've seen Duke do that. And this is she just getting caught too far and help. Looks like it's kind of – this is man, it looks like. I don't know. That looks like man or zone. I can't tell. But regardless, she got caught way too far and help. Tough one. Tough one, but Sharp's already Sharp's already made three or four threes in the game uh, that we saw, and he's already in rhythm. Tough floater. They're switching this ball screen. That is, I know he's a shot chucker, but Jesus Christ, that is such a difficult shot. And twenty seconds on the shot clock, Taylor shoots that. Houston would live with that. Sheed one on one, have this dance. And then Cryer does a really good job of finding space. You got to stay attached. You're guarding off ball. You're supposed to be guarding Cryer right here. Help. They're talking, talking. He's dribbling. He goes to the gap. You got to stay, you got to stay attached somewhat to Cryer. You got to keep dropping with your guy if you're help. Instead, the help side doesn't drop with Cryer. Cryer beats him back door. Floater. Floater. You got to drop with your guy. You got to drop with your guy while being in help side. Just a simple handoff to Washington. Just too easy. AM was letting them get to their spots way too easy offensively. One-on-one -on -one with the bigger defender, tough take. That's what I'd love to see Mark Mitchell do. I mean, that's, that's a similar take for what we've seen from Mark Mitchell, right? Like have – or Roberts, not Washington, Roberts. Have him out there, make the big fellow play defense, beat him. Tough take, good finish. If you have a mismatch like that, go at him. And if it's going to be officiating like this game where everybody's in foul trouble for Houston because they're playing so aggressive, go at him. Little dump down, just filthy. All five guys crash. She crashes harder than anybody. Just filthy, filthy. You got to put a body on a body every time. But then straight line drive goes too far into it. But the straight line drive is there to make the right read. He just makes the wrong read. 
Uh, straight line drive helps there. Look at 13, wide open, wide ass open. Do Why are you going in three guys? Just terrible shot selection by AM. The right read until it was the wrong one. Kick that. Kick that. Ball screen again. Catch and shoot. Catch and shoot. Normally Houston blitzes ball screens, but AM was really doing a really good job early of avoiding getting blitzed, though. Houston had to change their coverage. Just too easy. Too easy. If you saw my last video, I say when a big catches it and there's two guards on the wing, first one back door. So Cryer's on a back door here. He's on a back door. And then to counter, instead of passing to the next guard and doing like a dribble handoff thing, this guard is going to set a ball screen for the big because a and switching everything. So he's setting a screen. Nice floater. Good play by Houston. Post up again by Roberts. Roberts has already killed AM, throwing out of the post a couple of times in this game. Ball fake, patient, and he's done that two or three times now. He's catching, looking deep opposite right away, looking for a crier or a shooter, and realizes when he it's not there, he has space, and he finishes over the help side defense. It's a tough take. He has soft touch for a big fella, 6'7". Now they're trapping double or trapping Sheed here, but flare screen action for their best shooter. Cryer says, why, thank you very much. Why, thank you very much. How Duke was killing JMU offensively, Houston was basically doing the same against AM. You're going to trap this. You're guarding Cryer. You have to be attached to him no matter what. Like if you know the you you know you're trapping as a team, your guy throws it. You got to attach with him immediately. Instead, he doesn't. He tries to seek out the the screen, the flare screen. He gets buried. You got to attach with your guy immediately and make him go over the top. Got to make him go over the top. Good catch and shoot on the baseline out of bounds. Every time AM looked to be dead, they did punch back. I mean, they're down 11 with 322 left. Straight line drive. It's there. It's there. You got to attack them one on one with a full head of steam like that. This is such a pretty set. This is like in the NFL, the pick play, but you got to keep running your route so they don't call it a pick. This is what AM just did. I think they'll show it again. Watch this guard right here in the middle of the screen just take out, I think that's Sheed. Just runs right into his chest and then just keeps running like he's trying to go outside to create a lane for the flush. It's a good set. It's a good set. Number four sets this right here. Just runs right into the chest. It's a great set. They're not going to call that a legal screen because he's acting like he's going over top. Like that a lot. Like that a lot. Now they're down eight with 114 left. Quick hitter. How are you going to get a quick hitter? Just like that. Catch and shoot. A little pin down action for your best shooter coming off deep opposite. Gets his feet underneath him on the turn. Five-point game. And then, obviously, this. Look, I he was selling. I don't know number four's name, but. What the hell is that? You think that's bad? What the hell is that? Just talk about full-on panic mode. Shit in your pants. Luckily, they keep the ball. And luckily for AM, it does not go to him because wide open look, bang. Let's go to overtime. Just skipping a rock on a lake right there. Finds the shooter. Big shot. Now here comes Sheed. You live with that. You live with that. When he's squaring up like that, when he's dancing, when she is dancing, you want him to dance into a shot. That's fine. That is fine. 
It's when he attacks that kills you. A great hustle. A- Houston just unbelievable hustle. Dagger. Dagger. Sharp again. Might have been a travel, but misses. Offense rebound kills you. Offense rebound kills you. Down five. Ball screen action. Tough shot. Tough shot. And then here comes Sheed. The play of the game. Attacking the help side defender. And just what a pro hop. What a pro hop. And that's blouses. Game, blouses. Houston moves on. Houston moves on. Just a tough rip through. Not a travel. Off too strong. And that's it. That's it. So, the keys for the game. You got to get out and push and transition. You got to stop. You got to go. Even on a make, try and go and get them off balance because you do not want Houston to get comfortable on defense. No live ball turnovers. Limit live ball turnovers because Houston's trying to go out and run and get either layups or transition threes. You got to keep Houston off the glass offensively. Got to keep them off the glass offensively. So, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, Duke comes out, plays physical just like did against JMU. I will say that I'm glad that Duke played James Madison instead of Wisconsin last round because JMU was more was the more physical team. They are a physical team, and now Duke's playing the most physical team for Houston. That is Houston. So they kind of had a warm up with James Madison, and now they play the the cream of the crop defensively, Houston. And I think Duke can win this game. And so we will see it for the next video breakdown. But I appreciate I appreciate you guys watching the channel. It truly means a lot. And I'll see you guys on the other end of the Duke Houston game.